oh, this is representative of my grandma. When if you oh. showed your grandma, your grandma don't even like tattoos, right? You just <laughs> wanted a tattoo. Tell the truth. You wanted a tattoo because you think it's cool now. And oh, it's only oh. gotten cool in the last like 20 years, right? And now you're just making. So for me, it's like. Okay, it's thousands of years old, bro. I mean, it I'm, is, it honestly, is, but I'm saying the mainstream my shit. Older than your profession, bro. That's no, 100%, weird. but the mainstreaming <laughs> of it, the mainstreaming uh, of it is new. Um, I, I've digged your YouTube for a while, but I don't Appreciate even know what your name you, is. Alan, Alan, my name is Alan. Alan, how's it yes, going, sir? Um, well, man. man, I got I got a list of things to say to you. Uh, to I me, wasn't expecting this, I was gaming, we're getting it in um one i think like maybe semi pop unpopular opinion amongst everybody i'm not sure mm -hmm. but uh how old are you i'm 31 31 okay i'll be 35 next month and i fuck with you as far as this manosphere because you know your podcast it was adults at the table right mm -hmm. um we're having vulnerable conversations um we're separated from a lot of the bullshit. And I think as a culture, I know I'm a light bright, but I'm half black. Mm -hmm. We're we're so fucking fascinated with media, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're so fucking fascinated with this, whatever this vision is, which always really seems so simple and lame to me. But I think I'm saying all that to say, like in a weird way, for lack of better words, I I bet to some people as far as the manosphere goes, your your page could be almost boring. I'm sorry if mm -hmm. that sounds lame. Yeah, but like, no, that's true. That's real. It's straightforward, yeah. maybe even dry, right? Like mm -hmm. whatever it is, but it's because it's adults fucking talking. And I just hopped in when you were talking about the pot the balloon thing, which my fucking wife has been on for like the man. last fucking month. <laughs> and bro, it's entertaining, I just, man. it's entertaining, but there's a part of me that just feels like, it's wasted what you talking about this shit, man. Mm. Like I, I get sure there are some pieces of it. And every time I watch it, I'm just like, oh man, every bitch is a fucking realtor. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Old like, model. come on, but, but yeah. it's a show where to this point, may, maybe in the beginning, motherfuckers was on there finding love. But at this point, bro, it's influencers yeah. having their little minute, getting their shit or whatever. So I just, for me as a grown up on your page enjoying your shit i just i want to say that to the young man and to everybody that consume it as entertainment but i don't think that you should even expect to get that shit when you're meeting a black woman you know and, I, and sure it doesn't trickle down but like that that's a lot of the the issue with us bro is like we're constantly consuming this shit and we and we want to view the world through this lens of our fucking phone but that's just not that's just not the i, I talk to my niggas and I, I, like if we talk about fresh and fit or whatever you know like i think for me the red pill stuff and the manosphere spoke to me because there's an inner high school loser in me you know what i mean there's an inner kid that wasn't cracking in high school and got out and did well you know what i mean and and of course, those niggas are are losers now. You know, they mm -hmm. you know they're whatever they is, and 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 that's how it happens in life. And there's that little bit of that anger in me, but I can only hear so much mm -hmm. black female bashing, and, and and I think we have issues on all sides. But if we're not, this I'm, I'm coming off soft, but if we're not going to be compassionate when we're speaking about it. You kind of mm. lose me. Like I, I think so much of females and, and and males missing each other is just not even thinking about what it's like to be the other fucking person. You know, mm. like I, I, I think I, you know, a lot of women have entitlement. Man, I get it. You know, I, I heard a dude yeah. talking about um, a hot girl he knew who's like forty something now for the first time not getting like attention at a bar and having to wait in line for a drink. I but there's a part of me if I'm trying to be compassionate, I can go, all right, man, let's envision the life of what it is to be a woman. To, to be a young pretty girl. Your whole life the fucking sea is split for you, bro. Like Moses, you know? You go into anywhere you go, you have attention and you have, you know, and everything lines up for you. Why wouldn't you expect the world to just 
accept you as you are, you know? Right, and so. I don't know, man, maybe, maybe that's dry, but um, I, I love your podcast, man. I, I love what you're you, doing. Man. I just feel like nobody's take. are we taking the pop the balloon thing seriously? Nobody's <laughs> taking that shit seriously, right? That's not really yeah. what we're talking about, right? I didn't yeah. hear your passport conversation, but yeah, no, I mean the the, the main thing uh, when I started this off was um, like why I've been, uh, I guess I've taken a hiatus from YouTube, uh, and it was basically because of that, right? Is is because, like you know, using the pop the balloon as an example, um, she started maybe two three months ago. Uh, and she's almost a half a million subscribers. <laughs> Each of time. her videos gets 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 million views. Um, yeah. So it's clear where the demand is, right? And and mm-hmm. as somebody who is participating in this uh, in this business, you have to decide: Am I going to uh, go with what's going, or am I going to stay with the boring, more methodical, more cerebral stuff that mm-hmm. I prefer? Right. And, and, you know, unfortunately, I I think the sweet spot is using what is going um, Mm. to facilitate the more slow, methodical conversation. Because I, you know, I I used to do that in college. Like I'd come up with these outlandish titles. Like, you know, uh, I remember during Christmas time, we did a a discussion called What is a Ho Ho Ho? And. And the uh, the uh, uh, the vice president of the school called me into his office. It was like, "Hey, Alan, uh, what, what 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 you got, big white man? It was like, what you got going on?" And I explained it to him. He was like, "Oh, okay." But again, unfortunately, you do have to put the uh, the the medicine in the candy, as it were. Um, you know, so I I, I got I tired you. of doing that. But you know, if I'm I gonna come you. back and and try to have some impact, I have to speak to to people from where they are. Uh, I get it, know, man. I wish I, I didn't it. have to, but yes, it's, nah. the, it's the case. I'm, a, I'm afraid you're going to the dark side. You know what I mean? Nah, but nah, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I even feel like that about rappers, man. Like I, I yeah. think that's why um, people fuck with Kendrick so much. You know, it's like, yeah. our, hey, do you know who Locksmith is? I think like, I've heard the name. Is he? Is he white? No, 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 no. He okay, he's probably know, black and Middle Eastern or some shit. But uh, phenomenal oh, he, rapper. He he does. Uh, he freestyles in a car. Freestyles in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know he's somebody, a battle yeah. rapper, all the above. Yeah. But I, I think my analogy is, I think Kendrick is palatable to us because he rides that line of what you're saying. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where it's like yeah. enough hood shit, enough yeah. speaking about real issues, intellect, things we need to work on, but not yeah. using big enough words. Whereas like Locksmith yeah. is like reading an encyclopedia and sure it's yeah. for the purists. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, same um, with, I mean, you're talking about battle rap. Same with uh, Loaded Lux. Yeah, uh, Loaded Lux, you got to rewind and rewind and rewind. Triple entendres, quadruple entendres. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, I think, you know, one of one of the realizations I came to is like, I, I like to think of myself as an intellectual, you know, social justice warrior, whatever. But at the end of the day, from the perspective of YouTube, I'm an entertainer. Right. The people who are watching right now, the people who are watching on Instagram, they're watching for entertainment. And unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, um, entertainment traditionally is something that allows you to turn your brain off, not on. Uh. Right. So as critical as we are and I've been of people wanting me to be more bombastic or whatever the case may be, like I'm I'm not giving them what they are used to entertainment being. And mm-hmm. for YouTube, you're tuning in for entertainment. There's a small group of people, and most of them are watching right now, who are entertained by the uh, stimulation of their brain cells. But the vast <laughs> majority of people, the vast majority of people, they want simple answers to complex questions. Yeah. They want uh, um, hyperbole. They want, you know, fire and brimstone and, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not that good at that. <laughs> Maybe one no, day I'll get good. That's real you know what shit, I'm saying? Man. I, I, yeah. I get it. And, and you should be able to blend both, you know? And right. I think, you know, I heard you talking about bringing the podcast back. And I would imagine that would be a good way, way to make it happen. Um, yeah. I think that your Yellow Flag series was a, a really great bridge of that, you know? It, it's you, it's the topic, but 
I just found it, and I, mean, I guess I'm an old man already, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, I found it so fucking interesting, you know? Yeah. Um, but I do want to comment on it because I'm a tattoo artist. Talk to and me. so I, I heard you bring it up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to say my part. I don't really think, I, I think, unless you're an enthusiast, you probably wouldn't know the difference. But there's a part of me that wants to say bad tattoos are a red flag. Mm. um so and yeah I, I don't think you have any tattoos do you i don't have any all yeah. right um it's unless you're an enthusiast man you, you know it's not really gonna happen i you're not really gonna be able to pick up on it but as an artist mm. somebody and an enthusiast somebody who has a lot of really good tattoos really it just means that they have money um mm. and 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 i even think that it says really good characteristics about them, man. You know, I, I have mm. my whole back done, right? My shoulders all the way over my ass. One big, gigantic painting. And it was a goal for me. It, a long time, I got it from one of my favorite artists. Ten sessions, or oh, probably over a year, right? Damn. Um, you know, almost a grand session. And so there's the money part, but also there's the dedication. Um, I think there's a reason why all type of cultures get tattooed, not to get no spiritual shit, but mm. there's a reason why it's important to us. But at the end of the day, you have to sit, you have to go through the pain, you have to make the decision. And so um, I think that there can be some strong characteristics that can come from somebody that's completely tatted. Mm. Um, but but I'm also with you though, you know, it's mm. like, uh, you know, enough is enough. I, I think there's a difference. I, I don't know if, if, if in a, a tattoo enthusiast is a red flag, but I see why you put it on there. And yeah. I don't really know if you would be able to tell the difference. If I had one chick right here that I was like, oh, her shit's fire. And one chick right here, um, I don't really know if you'd be able to tell the difference. So I, maybe I, it's lost for, on for words. Me, for me, for me it's, it's, it's less about the actual like quality of the tattoo. And it's more about, because I, like I talked about in the, in the, in the video, it's like, um, I believe, and you know, you're, you're, more than welcome to uh prove me wrong but i believe <laughs> um some people especially the people who like are whatever you would call overly tatted um it is like a it's, it's a therapeutic experience for them right there okay. there's a there's a there's a is a pain therapy right so there's a percentage so, of that yeah yeah so so for me that's why, again, that's why it's a yellow flag, right? It's, it's a it's a reason for pause. And then the, the other piece too is, um, I do think, and maybe this is the distinction you would make with good tattoo versus bad tattoo, but I've seen a lot of people um, want a tattoo simply, like if they're being honest, simply because it's now mainstream and it's now cool. Absolutely. I want a tattoo really bad and I'm going to think of some... Uh, uh, uh some some intrinsic value or some sentimental thing i can put on it to validate me spending this money that i might not actually have mm. or or doing this that I, I i don't really need to do but i i'm doing it because i want to be cool so i'm gonna say oh this is representative of my grandma when if you mm. showed your grandma your grandma don't even like tattoos Right, you just wanted a tattoo. <laughs> Tell the truth. You wanted a tattoo because you think it's cool now, and it's only gotten cool in the last like twenty years, right? And now you're just making. So for me, it's like okay, it's thousands of years old, bro. I mean, it I, is, it honestly, is. But I'm saying the mainstream my shit. Older than your profession, bro. That's no, hundred percent. But the mainstreaming <laughs> of it, the mainstreaming uh, of it is new. Um, I I hear what you're getting at. I, I, I hear what you're getting at. And, and I get that if you weren't as close to the culture as me, that you would get that. And, and honestly, I agree with you. I, I think the big takeaway is sometimes when people are focused, or sometimes when people are getting tattoos to be seen, mm. I think that that's a red flag. I, I, I'll tell you something really difficult about my gig, bro. I've tried it a million different ways. There is no good way to tell an 18 year old that they that they shouldn't get their tattoo without them feeling like they oh shit hold up. Yeah, I get you. Oh no, I cut out. It's really faint now. Can you hear me? 
Oh yeah, there you my go. fault, man. The AirPods died. But I, no my, my point was is there's no good way to tell an 18 year old that their tattoo is a bad idea without them feeling like it it's stupid, or that they're that I'm saying they're fucking dumb, you know. Mm. And so like, <laughs> it, like that you know yeah. th- this yeah. shit's about money to a lot of people, bro. But for me, I feel complicit in your tattoo. You know, I'm in Austin now. I'm from Denver. Just just before I I left Denver, I had a young white boy come in and try to get, this is not a joke, with his older sister, try to get the communist symbol tattooed on his neck. And I just, it is his very first tattoo, you know? And I'm like, bro, you want to be seen? I'm like, look, you're going to be a different person in three years, homie. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? But like, there's no good way to say it, let alone people that, bro, I've talked girls out of getting a name tattoo and then they were broken up three months later. So I, there's something there, you know, people get these things in different parts of their lives. And, um, and I, and I see what you're saying. And I'm, there's probably a yellow flag, even with an enthusiast somewhere, you know? Um, but it's, it it can be difficult to read, but uh, I'm with you, you know, when it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a tattoo because there's cultures where they they get them, you know, face tattoos just to sure. enhance their beauty. That's what they say. Sure. And if it has a great meaning, whatever. Um, I don't mm. think there's nothing wrong with getting a tattoo because you think it's sexy. Um, but there's a kind of a difference between that and being 22 and getting, like you said, your grandma's name on you or some shit. It's just it's just to to look like a music video, man. These, these niggas exactly. watch too many music videos, bro. Exactly. I, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Exactly. And you know, that, that was, I think that's why I called the series yellow flags. Cause it's just, I don't think we pause enough when we're considering, uh, our mate choice or even like somebody we're interested in. We don't pause enough to reflect and consider, is this shit going to work? Mm-hmm. And you know, even, you know, you know, even with that, like one of the episodes of social media, like, um, the, the main issue, if I had to like oversimplify, uh, the women that are problematic or women that give men the, the toughest time. It's women who are more uh, concerned about the external world and mm-hmm. you know, impressing social media or their family or whatever than actually nurturing uh, a good a good and productive home. So, uh, you know, yeah. tattoos aside, <clears throat> hair aside, <laughs> all that other shit aside, yeah. it was really... Let's focus on that. That I mean, yeah, bro. The Instagram shit has got it. Young yeah. men, it, the Instagram shit's got to be an immediate fucking red flag, bro. I mean, unless 100%. she's a like, you know, if she's showing anything, 100%. it's like I, I, I just can't. It was so important for me, but I re- I, lo- I love. I'm not gonna say it to my wife, but I love your car analogies, bro. <laughs> it's, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> but, and, and just and it's, it's so real funny, shit, man. It's bro. I, I got a oh, I got a oh nine. Honda CRV. I bought that shit. Eight grand, eighty five thousand miles last year. Don't I'm like, no problems. Hey, bro, no my, problems. my new daughter, two months old, she fuck around and be able to drive that shit in high school. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Um, Facts. But I, I think it, it's something. It's weird. It's very taboo, and I would never ever want to make my wife feel a type of way or nothing like that. But there is something to the point of like. The person who's your forever person is probably not going to be the hottest person you fuck that's visually. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And that's mm-hmm. on both sides. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I, I remember watching like an Amy Schumer movie. Um, she's whatever, but she made some joke like they were talking about like the best sex they've ever had. And the one chick was like, yeah, that dude's always in jail. She was like, I was thinking about reaching out to him. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so they, they have their own version of that. You know what I mean? It, that's on both sides. That's for us too. You know, mm-hmm. we're not, the, we're, we, we don't, we don't get them the wettest, you know what I mean? Whatever it is, you know, um, maybe mentally, eventually, maybe that's a stretch, but th- mm-hmm. there's something to that. When I you're thinking you're about your forever person and it's okay to not be there, you know what I mean? But, I, I, I like your analogies with that. That's right on point for me. No, I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you again, man. Let me uh get uh, the other brothers up. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Tony, I see you. Hey, hey, yeah, hey can, I say, can I say one more thing? Yeah, yeah go ahead, man. It, I find it, um, I get, because, you know, I feel like I, I have the inner um, hater in me, right? I got that. that <laughs> I, I, I got the high school loser in me, you know? And yeah. I think that, and, and many people relate with that, with the reason why the manosphere um, preached to me. But when, when things are too heavy on the women, 
sometimes it's hard for me to digest. And I get that they're the gatekeepers of it, right? But mm. are you familiar with Roland Fryer's work at all? Roland Fryer, no. Roland Fryer is an economist. Um, I think he went to Harvard. He just did like a whole piece about the truth about police shootings and actual black deaths in America and all that stuff. Um, if anybody on here hasn't heard about Roland Flyer, Fryer, please well, is he up. like a black dude with dreads? Yeah, yeah. I didn't tell Yep, I saw you know, a clip. He was saying it's not what people think it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he did a piece about the the economics of grades in black culture. You know, mm. and I just maybe it's maybe it's like simple in my mind, and I don't know if we should be focusing on the women, focusing on the women or not. But there's a part of me that's like, until we're like these other cultures where grades and like good jobs gets girls pussies wet you know i don't know where we're gonna go you know what i mean yeah. or like or like you know that's just important to like asians right maybe it doesn't make their pussies wet but like <laughs> i was about to say it doesn't but but, but yeah. i think it's what you said what you guys were arguing a little bit about culture and about morals which honestly i feel like is the same thing a second mm -hmm. ago i i mean they got to be one after another and mm -hmm. um I mean, I guess just the answer is fathers, you know? I, I don't know. If I, if I reduce it down, it's probably that. But it's like, why are we, our culture is okay with single mothers, man? Like, that's like a really simple piece of it. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what the economics are of the Black women and us having kids and, and what that has to do with our spiral of this dysfunction. Mm -hmm. You know, does that make I sense? Mean, just, yeah, I mean, you going back to the whole Colombia thing, um, I think you could similarly say Colombian culture is okay with prostitution. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that's the case. The Japanese I, as well. Right. I, I, I don't I don't think that's the case. Japanese, maybe that's different because that's like the prostitutes, they're different over there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think oftentimes um, a lot of the bullshit becomes so normalized, it's indistinguishable from culture. It's the indistinguishable from real shit. And in our culture, <clears throat> because of how black men in particular have been emasculated, have been killed, mm. we've had to make peace with, uh, to, to a certain extent, we ha we've had to make peace with the women um, being the only visible uh, leadership and authority figures. And I think over time, um, these are the consequences of that. Yeah. Yeah. But let me let you go, man. <laughs> hey, I appreciate yes, you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. I'm going to shoot you a few bucks. Have a drink on your boy. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right, man. homie. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.